Hi, welcome to my channel and I'd like to tell you a few things about my new novel. If you like what I call <coughs> thoughtful page turning thrillers, it should be just the thing for you. And here it is. It's called Wolfgang's Castle and it's set mainly in southern Germany in World War II. Now, to start with, people often ask me what was the original inspiration behind this tale? <laughs> and in this case I tease them, and I'll tease you, by telling them it's because of the Caspian Sea Monster. Nope, I'm not pulling your legs. I was sniffing around Wikipedia one day, oh this was years ago, and came across this amazing device half aircraft, half sea vessel, which has been proven to work, but the idea has never really caught on. The Russians in particular, in the post-war years, tried various versions, one of which was your famous Caspian Sea Monster. Apparently, these hybrids exploit the scientifically proven feature called the ground effect. They're quite often called GEVs, ground effect vehicles, allowing it to reach high speeds when skimming across just above the surface of the water. You'll see on the real uh, Caspian monster the characteristic tubby wings, which indicate that it's not for flying through the sky at great heights, but for stabilizing it just above the surface of the water. So, I wondered what would happen if there was a secret Nazi project to develop one of these beauties and build large numbers to carry troops and materiel across the channel in a renewed attempt to invade Britain. <coughs> and then how would a small group of British military plus a handful of German colleagues put a halt to this monster? You're going to have to read the book to find out, but uh, here's just a taste. It starts off with a trainee photographic interpreter, James, who finds on an aerial photograph a strange phenomenon on a secluded lake in Bavaria. Her supervisor pours scorn on the, her interpretation of what she sees, but an SOE captain, Archie Wellings, overhears the chit-chat in the mess about her and goes in search of Jenny who's feeling pretty sorry for herself believing she's just an upstart girl in a man's world who can't see for looking as they say. But her sharp eyes have caught the image of a potential new super weapon being tested in strictest secrecy and the rest of the novel is about tracking down the research factory where these strange beasts are being developed in preparation for a renewed attack on the south coast of England. The other question that I'm often asked is why am I so interested in Nazi Germany and its grip on the German people? Well, I was born way back in 1940, a war baby, and here is a picture of the artist as a very young man <coughs> who learned as he grew up that our family actually had two relatives who had survived the Nazi years and had settled in Nuremberg in Bavaria. At the end of the war they found themselves in the Russian zone, in the city of Leipzig, or rather what was left of it. By pure coincidence my father, a regular soldier who rose to the rank of major, had spent the war in Ceylon as it was called before it was rebadged as Sri Lanka, setting up and maintaining the telecommunications network in that part of the world. When he returned at the end of the war, he was sent straight back to, into the thick of it, to the city of Berlin of all places, where he was charged with rebuilding the civilian and military telephone systems infrastructure of that area of the country. I should just stick in the note at this point to tell you he was universally known as Bill Last in City Street. 
Now, family history has it that my father picked up the phone one day in Berlin office and heard these words spoken by a tremulous woman's voice. Is that you, Billy? It was. It was his cousin, Winifred, speaking on a crackly line from Leipzig, telling him that she and her mother had survived the Nazi years and the war, and could he help them escape from the eastern zone across to the British or American zones of occupation. Now the family is very tight-lipped about what happened next, but to cut a long story short, he did succeed in doing just that, and a few years later our family invited Vinnie, her new husband, and her mother over to England to stay. Now, the sight of a blue Volkswagen Beetle caused something of a sensation in our own quiet suburban street in Ipswich, and it captivated me because as a boy I was always fascinated by cars. Cut another story short, and by some miracle they persuaded my parents to let me visit them in Nuremberg at the tender age of 12, being accompanied part of the way by an aunt who was ma making a pilgrimage to the grave of her brother, the tail end Charlie, who was shot down over Fenlo in Holland. And here is a picture of me standing by the graveside in one of those huge military cemeteries which the War Commission had started to construct around Europe and elsewhere in the world. I was totally entranced by Nuremberg. Despite the war scars it still bore, and to cut another very long and convoluted story short, I ended up studying German and, at the end of the day, becoming a professor of modern languages at Dundee University. I've always wanted to try and write a novel or two about the decade or so before I was born, and ended up so far with four novels, three of which are appearing in print around now, with a fifth about half written. All of these stories seek to achieve the following objectives. First and foremost, a thumping good page turner with believable characters, exploration of the seemingly unanswerable question, what do you do if you're a German who loves their country but hates the regime and is determined to challenge some of its worst excesses without ending up in the Gestapo torture chamber or dead. And thirdly, something which sort of evolved as I was writing, I wanted to explore the growing wall of women who were constrained by the Nazi powers that be as belonging in Kinder, Küche, Kirche, children, kitchen and religion. Their unsung achievements on the British side demonstrated beyond question that they weren't just a pretty face, so to speak, they had minds and capabilities, sometimes even exceeding those of their male counterparts. And Jenny Wilkins, with whom I mentioned earlier, is one such a young lady. As a footnote, I've also been fascinated by the role of chance and the way in which events turn not on thousands of young lives being squandered in set-piece battles, but in quite different ways behind the scenes, particularly in the development of new technologies and the like the ground effect vehicle being one of these new technologies, theoretically. Here's a little teaser though of a different kind before I sign off. I came across this picture in a pile of photographs of my early trips to Germany and on this occasion my parents were taking me there by car. There are no prizes on offer but can you guess what's happening here? The answer is that this is my father's car, a Ford Popular, swinging on a crane before being loaded onto the ferry in Harwich to go to the Hook of Holland. And that was before the days of roll-on, roll-off ferries. And it's just an echo from a distant past. Anyway, I've rabbited on enough about the book and its fascinating backstory. Please enjoy it, and if you do, 
do leave a nice positive review on Amazon for me. And for more of my books, keep an eye open on this channel and hit subscribe in the thumbs up side to keep abreast of my reviews as they appear.